the game for today <laughs> is going to be about comps. Okay, we're going to do like a game show on how to maximize your comps. Okay, so should we do it? Let's do it! it. Woo! Right, stand up. Okay. So again, what should you do to maximize your comps? Is that luxury? Yes. <laughs> luxury. Luxury. <laughs> All right. Malex. Okay, what should you do to increase your comps? If it is your first comp trip to a casino or a cruise line, what should you do? Okay. And I, and I should expand this beyond just your first comp trip. It's just your first trip to a casino. You're, you're making your first impression on them. What should you do? Don't interact at all with the non-comp players. <laughs> Play in the casino with your card every time, every session. Sleep at the, at the pool for hours without sunscreen. Oh, no. Or B, get in a fight with the bartender. Ooh, this is so hard. Yeah, it's a difficult one. What do you think? Somebody. I heard D, get in a fight with the bartender. No. <laughs> <laughs> Play in the casino with your card every time. That is yes, correct. Yes. Because your first trip to a casino, uh, whether it's a new casino opened up by your house or the first one with UR Comp, that is your chance to make your first impression mm -hmm. because a lot of times there's a lag time between um, what well, a lot that that sets your next offers. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you play like a champ, then your first offer is going to be good, and then you can keep that rolling because that's a rolling average. But you don't want to start out really low. Because then your first offer is gonna suck. Yeah. Is that a bad word? That's not bad. Nope. Uh, your first offer is gonna be bad, be and it's tough desirable. to yeah, it's tough to get it yeah. get it back up. So That's right. first time, play with your card every time. Yeah. But there are some instances that we'll get to maybe later where you don't want to play with your card. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's more at your local for shadowing. Yeah. Yeah. Foreshadowing. Yeah, foreshadowing. <laughs> and even table games players. Yes. Like I know a lot of them forget to like put your card down whenever you. Uh, Cash in when you buy your chips. Put your player's card down with your cash, yes. and they'll they'll exchange it for chips, and the host will come over and raid you. Very That's important. Right. Yep. Very important. Mm -hmm. And every trip matters. Every trip. <laughs> every trip matters. And on a cruise, every game matters because there's a session. There's a thing with land-based casinos. I'm not sure if it's on here, so I'm just gonna. I don't think there's a question related to it, so I'm just gonna talk about. It. <laughs> so there's a thing that players can really hurt themselves with if you go to a land-based casino is that you'll get offers in the mail or in your email where it's like, hey, come in, get a free Snuggie, get a bread maker, get like, there's always these like cheesy little gifts. It's like, hey, you got a toaster, come on in. And a lot of people will come in and they'll swipe their card to get the toaster, but they only have 10 minutes so they don't play. And what happens is that ad, that creates another trip in your system and all of a sudden you're in the casino system and all of a sudden your average play per trip just drops because of that toaster. Yeah. And now all of a sudden instead of getting couple hundred or hundred and free play it drops by half so just be careful it this doesn't apply to cruises because they know you're on the ship and there's no way to like avoid playing <laughs> you know it's just always play with your card on the ship yeah. but if at a local casino think think hard about uh, putting your footprint down with that player's card because that will open a new trip and if you don't play your average play will go down okay mm -hmm. so be careful all right this is the second question. It's gonna be just as hard. You just got to a, a table to play at. What should you do? Bet a large amount for the first few bets while the pit boss is watching. Forget to show the pit boss your player's card or hand it to the dealer. Tell everyone at the table, I'm counting cards. <laughs> or get right back up after you sit down because you know you just don't belong there. <laughs> Piece of cake. What do you guys say? Do it. A. Bet a large amount for your first few bets while the no. pit boss watches. Forget to show the pit boss your player's card. Tell everyone you're counting cards or uh, get right back up because you just don't belong there. <laughs> Tyler feels good about A. Katie, what do you think? Is that correct? That is correct! Yay! Yay! All right. Yay! So while you, when you sit down at a table, all right, with a slot machine, there's no way to trick the system about how much you're, you're betting. Okay, then you put your slot, your card in, you start betting, 
it just tracks every bet that runs through the system, so there's no way to inflate your bet or avoid getting a rating lower than you deserve. Mm -hmm. It just tracks everything. But at a table, what happens is you sit down, you hand your player's card, the pit boss will see what your buy-in is, mm -hmm. or he'll ask the dealer, he'll check your buy-in, and then they'll look at what your average bet is, okay? And that's what starts your clock ticking. So it's the stopwatch starts, and then it's, all right, Tyler's at the table. And then the pit boss, all right, Tyler bought in. 300. $300,000, wow. So yes. Three, all right, so Tyler buys in for $300. All right, they start, and then the pit boss watches. All right, Tyler, he's betting 50 bucks, which is kind of a high bet for that bankroll, but um, all right, so you're betting. But the, anyway, they'll watch the first five hands, six hands, and that that's what they're set your average bet at. And then the pit boss may walk away and he'll check other tables because they've got a pit full of tables, but they don't come back to your average bet. So what a lot of people do is they'll start, I'm just gonna start and see, you know, start at 25 bucks and I'll get a feel for the table and I'll start amping it up if it feels good. But what happens is you start risking more money because your bet goes up, but your ratings are stuck at that $25 per hand. Okay, so what you wanna do is you start at a good level and the pit boss sees, oh wow, Tyler, hundred dollars a hand for three hundred dollar buy-in. That's not gonna last long. But, all right, I hope he does well. So go then, bigger, go home. Go every bigger, time. go home. Every yeah. Every time. So he'll he'll track you at hundred. He may walk away. Then you could lower it, and all of a sudden you're betting twenty-five, but you can comp at a hundred. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. It does make sense. Okay. Math. 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 Okay. You just finished playing your table game session. What should you do as you get up? What is a good idea? You don't have to do it every time, but it's a good idea. What should you do as you finish your table game session before you leave the table? What should you do? Is it A, just, just get up, run to the buffet because you worked up an appetite? <laughs> is it B, throw your pocket, throw your chips in the air and say ta da? <laughs> C, ask the pit boss what he had your average bet at, what your ratings are? Or D, go tell everyone in the casino goodbye. <laughs> I think it depends on how many friends you made while you were there. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. So but all three. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> Ta-da! Goodbye, everybody! Yeah. What a great exit. <laughs> I'm on the buffet. Okay. So A, go to the buffet. B, throw. C, ask the pit boss. Mm -hmm. Or D, say goodbye to everybody. B. Ask the pit boss what you're waiting for. Katie, what do you think? That is correct! That is correct. All right, so this, so what this means, here's a, a way to do it, because it can be, some people feel like it's a little bit awkward, but here's an easy way to do it. You're cash, you're getting your, uh, you're coloring up your chips, you know, you're getting your greens turned into blacks, your blacks turned into, uh, what was it, pink, purples, I guess, purples. purples. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, hey, by the way, what did you get my average bet at? And here's, an, it's an easy transition. It's, ah, uh, you know, we had you at uh, $60 a hand. Okay, well, you know, I don't know if you saw, like, you know, I, I had it pressed 100, 150, 200 for a little while there. Uh, you got that? Like, uh, you know, and then there's another tip. If you're tipping the dealers, if you're having fun, the dealer likes you, tipping the dealers, the pit boss will look at the dealer, and then the dealer will go, oh, yeah, yeah, No, he was 100, 100 bucks yeah. a hand for a solid hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they update it. And then all of a sudden your average bet goes from 60 to 80. Mm -hmm. Okay, 60 to 70. Now what, that, it doesn't sound like a lot, but 60 to 80, is a 33% jump in your comps, right? So going from 100 to 120, that's a 20% jump in your comps. So if you can just, on your way out, hey, what was, you know, what was my rating? Um, that can get you a big increase, right? And it doesn't take much for the pit boss to do that. It's pretty easy. So as long as you're cool with the dealer, you tip in, you've been having a good time, they'll, uh, they should do that. On certain games like uh, craps, there's a lot of action going on, it's tough because it's a crowded table. What I'd recommend is, um, when you're putting the bets, if you, you have been pressing, you can ask the, the stick man or the guy by the box where they're like checking all the average bets. Just say like, hey, you got me, you got me with, uh, you know, 200 on the inside, right? And then they could, you know, and then they'll update your average bet. Because yeah. with craps, a lot of times they do it in real time. So mm -hmm. um, you can do it with craps, do it while the game's going on, with uh, blackjack or whatever. You can either check in while the game's going on or when you get up, just make sure they got your average bet. Because what happens if you, Try to do it at the end of the cruise, or even the end of the night. Like, hey, what do you got my ratings at? And then it's low. It's just, it's they can't really adjust it after the fact because they don't want to go to surveillance and like 
Oh yeah, you know. So don't don't do it after way after the fact because they just won't change it. And then two, if you're betting five bucks a hand, you're like, well, you see, I went up to fifteen a couple times. Like, just don't. If you're betting, <laughs> like, if, you're betting like, if you're like a comp level player, you're probably betting at the right amount. So just it's it's fair to ask them. They won't yes. be offended. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good tip. Yeah, yeah, no, we're trying to yeah. bring dye to the UR Comp family. Yeah, yeah. Yes. definitely color up and tip your dealer. Color yes. up and tip your dealer. Yes, for sure. <laughs> okay, now going to question four. It's over here, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so one, two, three, four. <laughs> All right, you and your travel partner both love playing slots. What should you do to maximize future offers? A, don't use your player's card because that is personal. <laughs> Take turns hitting the button. <laughs> Always pick the loudest slot machine, or D, play on the same player's card. Yes. I'm going to go with D, you play on the same player's card. D, play, play on the same player's card. Yes. I'm going to add a caveat, because I'm sure I can, I can already feel the comments coming in. This is more applicable to a land-based casino. Okay? Yes. On a cruise ship, it's fine. On a cruise ship, you are comp after you book your cruise with us, like when you book your cruise with us, the play is going to be combined. All right, we're going to combine both guests, if you, as long as you ask your host to link your accounts, mm -hmm. it's going to combine your play. So if you're playing on separate cards, it doesn't matter. Okay. But if you do go to land-based casinos I, and you're a slot player and you think you'll be with this person for a while, <laughs> because, <laughs> um, yeah, if you're on rocky ground, maybe don't uh, play with the same player's <laughs> card. But if you plan on being together for a while, uh, play on the same player's card. And here's why. Because let's say, what's the first band that comes to your head? Band? Yeah. Maroon 5. Maroon 5. <laughs> Good answer. All right. So <laughs> let's say Maroon 5 has a show at the at T-Mobile Arena at MGM. Okay. And MGM is giving out two comp tickets to Maroon 5 and three free nights for any players that are above 500 ADT. Okay. And ADT is average daily theoretical. Um, in comp travelers, we've got some stuff that explains it. But... Uh, above 500 average daily play, okay? Now, if you and your uh, significant other are 300 ADT players, neither of you get the invite. But if you had played on the same player's card in different slot machines, because you can ask for reprints, then you look like one $600 player, okay? And then you get the invite to Maroon 5 and a plus one, okay? So it always pays off. You're a slot player to play on the same card. Um, casinos get mad at me for saying that, but it's true. So if you, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you play at a, at a land-based casino, I'd recommend printing duplicates of your card and play on the same one. Um, because then you look like one bigger player and then you get the better offers mm -hmm. and all the good offers usually come with a plus one, so then you can both go. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Five. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any any questions after that? Um. Now while she's looking, <laughs> I'm gonna give you time to think about because these are all really hard. So yeah. it takes a, a lot of deliberation. You're ready to play blackjack. What table should you go to to maximize your comps and minimize your risk? It's a small variable, but it could help you. Um, which table should you go to maximize your comps and minimize your risk? The table with the most attractive people, which is obviously you are comp members because obviously. smartest, most beautiful, you are comp family. The table with the most attractive member people, the table with the least amount of people, the table with the most amount of, tape of people, or the closed table. If you want to play blackjack, where do you go? Least amount of people or most amount of people? This is actually kind of a tricky one. It is tricky. It is. Do we have to poll the audience in this one? You can ask the audience <laughs> if you want to maximize your comps. Actually, it's it's going to be the same amount of comps, but slightly less risk. Mm -hmm. Would it be the table with more people or the table with less people? Mm -hmm. Sounds um, like math. Is math. We've got a B, C, 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 B, C, 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 C. Sounds like <laughs> table with more people. The table with more people. Is that your final answer? I think so. Yeah. Katie? That is correct! Yay! All right. It's 
course correct. the URCOP members would know. Uh, yeah. so. Of course. <laughs> Most of them were on the crafts cruise, and they know exactly how to play crafts now. Yeah, and they know what a crowded table is like, yeah. because we had so many crafts players. It was, uh, that was a blast. Crafts cruise too, you guys gotta get on it. But, uh, yeah, so the most amount of people. Why? Because when they're putting in your average bet, the math behind it is just typically set at a number of hands per hour. And they don't really change it whether it's you playing one-on-one -on -one with the dealer or there's five other people at the table that take a long time every time they look at their cards and they think about it. And so what happens is, no matter what, if you're getting credit for 60 hands per hour or 70 hands per hour, whatever the casino sets it at, um, if you're at a table where the game's a lot slower, you there's less money being risked. If you're playing one-on-one, -on -one, it could go up to 100 hands per hour, right? Because you're the bet, blah blah, you win, blah blah, you lose, blah blah. And it, but if there's a lot of people at the table, you're risking your money less times. But your comp rating is going to be the same. Okay. Same with um, another way to kind of extend your play a little bit is you know if you have to. Go to the bathroom, you have to take a call, you have to like update your Instagram, whatever, you have to step away from the table. Uh, some people make a big show, hey, hey, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, you know, watch my spot. But a lot of times you can just kind of slip out, no one's gonna sit there because your chips are there and you can come back five, 10 minutes later, you're getting rating, but you haven't risked any money because you're away from the table. Yeah. Now sometimes if it's a enterprising pit boss and they, oh, you know, they log out right away, but sometimes they don't and you've got you know, a quarter of an hour of play at a hundred dollar average bet and you actually didn't risk any money. <laughs> so, you know, I mean stuff, it's tips that can give you a little leg up. You know, some people just don't want to think about it, they just want to play and not think about it. But for some people that really think about how do I stretch my dollar, get the maximum amount of comps, these are some tips that hopefully you find helpful uh, because come from uh, the casino industry where I work behind the scenes on like making the offers. I can tell you these tips do work, so uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully y'all learned something, hopefully it was valuable.